Now my next project is to cut the end of this aluminum angle off at an angle of 25, almost 25 degrees. The problem I have is my miter gauge on my table saw only goes up to 30. So I'm going to have to put a shim to get that extra 5 degrees clamp it. Now I'm not real crazy about sawing aluminum on a table saw. It would be much better if I had a band saw, but my little band saw couldn't do what I'm doing here. So I'm going to do this on a table saw. And this is very dangerous and I hope there's not going to be a trip to the emergency room. Don't recommend this to anybody. Easy too. So far there's no blood. Actually this came out pretty good. Uh, I thought I might have to sand it, but I'm, I think just a flat file will take care of what's left on here. So that's my 25 degree angle. Now I've filed this down and filed off the sharp points of this thing. And um, to hold the upper tube assembly on, I'm going to use this clamp. This is a this is meant for refractors. It's also an ideal way to, to hold the upper tube assembly. But to be able to mount it, I'm going to have to uh, attach this plate. And ideally, I, I, I could have it welded on there. But I'm also going to just um, bolt it on with screws. And then I'll have to put a, a plug on the inside of this and uh, attach this like so. Yeah, that's the idea. So this is my plate bolted on here. I've got five um, 440 screws holding it on. And uh, also draw a hole in the center which will bolt onto my um, clamshell holder and with a uh, 5 16th screw uh, it attaches. On the bottom I, I put a block of um, hardwood uh, maple then I screwed it in on the inside with stainless screws. Then I drilled and tapped um, through it so that uh, this bolt actually comes through into, into the metal. And then I got a piece of uh, rubber that goes in between here that kind of snugs it down and keeps it from moving so that it attaches like so. Snug it down. It's good and solid. And as you'll find out later, there's a lot of advantages. I really like this idea for holding the the upper tube on. Not only looks good, but it's there's a lot of advantages to it.
now that the clamshell is attached uh, it would be time to cut it to length but I'm going to postpone that till a little bit later if you look on my CAD drawing I don't have the clamshell drawn out but I do have the offset distance which is 0.64 inches which would allow me to determine how long the the angle should be in my case my mirror is f12.2 something and I'm going to make up the difference in the length of this angle and leave it a little bit long until I get a final measurement with everything assembled. Today I'm working on the mirror box and I cut four panels 30 inches and a hair over 30 and an eighth I believe and two panels 11 inches wide and two panels 11 and a half inches wide actually here over 11 and a half and you can see that these, these this thin plywood wood has a, has a bow in it so I'm going to be sure and have the, the two inward curving bows face each other and I'm going to glue on some poplar supports on the edges and on one end I uh, need to be three quarters shy because it will be a brace along the top and the other side three inches away because later I will adjust the tilt of the primary and I've got uh, four four uh, strips of poplar and one of them is going to be on the corner where the angle is and I'm going to leave three inches on that side on both each ends the three inches is for the attachment for the angle so uh, I've already marked where these will go and I'm going to just blow them on spread the glue out when I can. Okay. Glue that on. I'm sure they're flush with the edge. This side will be the side with the angle attachment. Okay, now I have uh, glued all my ribs on, and then I took and run it across the sander. Uh, same thing as running across the joiner, all four, four of them, so I have nice square sides. So my next step is to glue on. the side panels. Actually it'll end up being the top. So I'm going to glue. There's some glue. Take a panel and put it in place. Starting with the ends, make sure they overlap just a hair. You want to check it for square. If not, you may have to adjust it. And I'm going to check for flatness this way. Right now, you can see the bow. Straighten out the bow as you clamp it down. Straight. Square, square enough. 
And what side? That side's done. Uh, just continue around and keep adding, gluing one side at a time. Check your square. Finally, for the last side, uh, make sure all your edges are square to each other on the ends. And uh, just going to All around the top edge on. of the box, I glue one half by three quarter inch poplar braces, but leaving a one and a half inch gap on two sides where the block that holds the, the angle is attached. The attachment block is one and a half inch square poplar block with two one quarter twenty threaded inserts drilled and pressed in. But before I glued it in, I took a belt sander and sanded the end of the box flat to accept a, an aperture stop that's made out of eighth inch Baltic birch. The mirror cell starts with a three quarter inch square of Baltic birch fitted to the bottom end of the box. I drew a eight inch circle five inches from the two sides opposite the angle attachment. I made a simple six point edge flotation system with three sixteenth inch aluminum bars, one inch countersunk washers spaced with a eighth inch rubber washer. The bar is held on a 1024 threaded rod and I filed two nuts into a conical shape uh, to hold the bar and they were super glued into place so that they wouldn't move with about an eighth of a rotation loose so that the bar will teeter slightly. Quarter 20 threaded inserts were screwed into the mirror cell and then a triangular hole was cut in the back for ventilation. I made adjustment knobs out of triangular piece of hard maple plywood threaded and then uh, fastened down tight with a nut. For side support I used right angle brackets from Home Depot I super glued a half inch section of sheet rubber in the middle of the bracket and uh, if you notice I had to change to a larger bracket, a two inch bracket. Here's the mirror cell in the back of my mirror box. Notice it's tilted uh, two and a half degrees. This side is 0.67 inches lower than this side and these two corners are half of that 0.33 inches to give a two and a half degree tilt. Pull this out. Um, forgot to mention the mirror will be either glued down with silicone or double-sided tape. I'm not sure which yet. And uh, here you can see the, the uh, corner pieces of wood that I used to set the two and a half degree angle. When I'm done here, I'm going to glue in some poplar uh, bracing all the way around so that the mirror cell can screw into the, the, the poplar braces. On the other end, um, here is my aperture stop. Um, it's an aperture stop, but it also stiffens this end. And uh, notice that it sticks over there a little bit. Um, I'm getting ready to take a belt sander and grind all these extending edges down flush the same with the sides and then uh, after that it'll be ready to varnish and paint paint black on the inside note that I did move the primary up a little bit higher than what's shown in my drawing to give a little more room for the incoming beam but I'll adjust this later by tilting the aluminum angle just very slightly. And they say we're making too much greenhouse gases with our cars and planes and cattle industry. But I ain't worried I was gonna save us.